It's picture perfect. 30 exclusive invites to a free lunch on the rooftop of a boutique hotel. The guest list as colorful as the decor. There's the lifestyle blogger, the singer, the model, the traveler. But the one thing they all have in common, they have followers. Lots of them. My name's Andrew Lovesy, and I have just over 18,000 followers on Instagram. I have 29,000 followers. I have around 60,000 followers. I have 101,000 followers. <laughs> So for this gathering, everything is as Insta-worthy as it gets. Instagram's actually a partner in bringing all these people together because what gets snapped here and in the days to come will be seen and heard by hundreds of thousands of people right up until election day. Your followers trust you. This is Caro Lutby. She and her team at Apathy is Boring are the brains behind all of this. The group's mission, to get young people 18 to 30 engaged in the political process. And that usually means voting. So one of the things that we know um, is that simply making an ask of somebody in a meaningful way increases their likelihood to get out and vote by up to 10%. So Apathy is Boring is out in the streets doing this work face to face across this country. But if we can also get the support of communities online to make this ask of their followers, then we'll be able to reach far more youth than one organization ever could alone. So here's the uphill climb. According to a recent study carried out by Abacus Data, commissioned by the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations, almost half of 18 to 25 year olds said they didn't follow national politics all that closely. But following an influencer, that can feel like following a friend. Still, here's the thing. These aren't exactly political people. My name is Capri and I'm a singer-songwriter. I mainly focus on fashion, some beauty, lifestyle content, etc. Yeah, um, I work for Canadian Geographic magazine as the manager of editorial and travel partnerships. So I share, you know, anything from like affordable fashion finds to like beauty tips and tricks. How political are the influencers that you've invited here today? It depends what you mean by political. <laughs> so I would argue that democracy and politics is in everything, hmm. right? Right. They're not But, but how explicitly are they talking yeah, about politics? Exactly. That's yeah, the they're question, not. Right? Yeah. Right. And and they're their followers by extension too. How engaged in the political system do you think their followers are right now? I think likely not very engaged, right. which is why that's the audience we're targeting. So working with uh, a beauty blogger or a fashion Instagram uh, influencer or um, a body positivity inf Instagram influencer helps us reach a diversity of youth populations that don't always hear this message. This is Samantha Best. She might count herself among the people who are following the cues of others. My boyfriend's family is very into politics, very into politics, so it does come up at family dinners. And Samantha also follows Jenna. They've never met, but while she thinks she was probably going to vote even before seeing Jenna's posts, those gentle nudges certainly didn't hurt. This October 21st will be her first time. I feel like that's super important, and if they can convince even a third of their followers to go do it, I think that's amazing. <laughs> So at this gathering, yes, it is an invitation to a free lunch and some great photo opportunities, but it's also kind of a workshop because getting political can be a bit like walking into a minefield. You might rub some people the wrong way and being too preachy, that's a turnoff. So the key message here, keep it positive, make it normal. I do think it's super important that, you know, if you do have an influence and you have people following you, that you talk about things that you're passionate about. And I think that voting and politics is something that everybody should be interested in. Our identities are political. Um, for us to exist as who we are, um, as queer people, as marginalized people, as people of color, our existence is political. Because if people aren't actually caring about the country in which they live, then 20 years from now we're not going to have the best country to live in. And that's not particularly something that I want to hand off to the next generation. All of this is a creative solution to an old problem, but Apathy is Boring says it's more than willing to experiment, to try something new, if it can help push the next generation of voters to the polls.